As incomes slowly rise across Indonesia, the country's appetite for beef is growing. Helping to feed the demand is Australia, which over the years has shipped millions of live cattle to its Southeast Asian neighbours for slaughter. It's a controversial industry which has had both its highs and lows. But the live cattle trade between the two nations is again thriving, as Charlotte Glenny discovered when she travelled to the province of Lampong to visit the Indonesian branch of the Australian agribusiness Elders. And a warning, some viewers may find some images in this story disturbing. On the southern tip of the Indonesian island of Sumatra, thousands of Australian-born cattle are being fattened up for sale and slaughter. The Brahmin and Brahmin Cross cattle from northern Australia began their six-day journey to Lampung, weighing around 320 kilos. By the time they're sold, they'll weigh on average 450 kilos, and buyers will be lining up for them. Elders Indonesia has been selling cattle here since 2001. In that time, the annual amount of beef consumed by the average Indonesian has continued to grow. The best estimate is about two and a half kilos a year for Indonesia. If, the, if they lift to five kilos, which is from a low base is very doable, we're going to need a million cattle a year into this country to feed them, for sure. The potential is huge. That will obviously be a lot of imported beef as well, not just cattle. So if we talk in terms of tonnage, it might be an extra three or four hundred thousand tonnes a year to import, some we share between cattle and box beef. Uh, and we could easily get them in the next three to four years. Elders is one of seven Australian companies exporting live cattle to Indonesia, but it's the only Australian cattle exporter that's also an importer. Its business here is worth almost $30 million a year. 70% of the revenue comes from selling live cattle, the remainder from processing chilled beef. Over the years, it's been a business fraught with challenges. The lowest point came in 2011, when the ABC's Four Corners program broadcast footage filmed by Animals Australia, revealing shocking abuse of cattle in Indonesian abattoirs. The Australian government reacted by imposing a month-long ban on the trade, until exporters could guarantee the animals would not be subjected to such cruel treatment. For animal welfare, they're, they're treated far more humanely now to the point of slaughter than, than they were, there's no doubt. Unfortunately, it took, took something like that to, for it to improve, but I'm very happy to say that, you know, 95% of cattle are being stunned now prior to slaughter, which is a massive outcome. Queenslander Richard Slaney joined Elders Indonesia in 2002. By then, the company was already stunning cattle in its own abattoir before killing them, but many other slaughterhouses of Australian cattle were not. Unfortunately, our ability to get the, the local population here to, to stun it as we would do it was, was a, it was a difficult process because they've had their own, their own culture and this sort of thing. So, yeah, it never felt too good. It was, you know, it's nice now to walk into an abattoir certainly and see cattle stunned across the country. Indonesia's wet markets are where most of the live cattle from Australia end up. All cuts of meat cost the same here. Today, 90,000 rupiah or $8.20 Australian a kilo. In the meats, all used for the same three dishes. Beef rendang, bakso or meatballs and soup. Many people know the protein from red meat is good for them. As their earnings increase, so does demand for beef and also its cost. The high beef prices have led Indonesia to try to strengthen its own domestic cattle industry. During the recent election campaign, both presidential candidates promised more self-sufficiency, thus reducing their reliance on Australia. But Indonesia has 250 million people to feed, and it lacks the resources and geography to produce livestock efficiently. The governments have been trying to push for that since 2005, in the President uh, Megawati, back in her gov government days. Um, they're going to continue to, to look to do that, and they should. Are they going to be successful? Well, it depends what you define as self-sufficiency. Every, every head they improve in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of population of cattle is a win, 
and, and uh, it should be seen as that. Even local government officials question their country's ability to produce enough cattle to feed its vast population. Ya, ada dari pemerintah untuk mengembangkan suasana sapi itu untuk bangsa Indonesia itu ada program itu sudah ada, tapi itu butuh waktu yang lama sekali bisa menjadi sembada daging untuk Indonesia. Elders is helping Indonesia breed more cattle. These young Lampung-born heifers will soon be sold to local farmers to grow their herds. There's no doubt we should and need to get involved in helping them with their own aspirations. Um, there's not much to be feared by that. In 2009, Australia exported a record 770,000 live cattle to Indonesia. But then, as part of the drive to achieve self-sufficiency, an import quota was imposed and exports fell to a low of 280,000 in 2012. Now they're back on track to reach more than 600,000 head of cattle this year, after the quota was abolished due to beef shortages and rocketing prices. Still, the price of beef remains stubbornly high, especially during times of celebration. Pada waktu lebaran tahun yang lalu, kita bisa motong hanya sekitar 40 ekor satu malam untuk lebaran. Lebaran hari tahun ini sudah sampai 75 ekor satu malam. Jadi permintaan yang luar biasa dari masyarakat itu. Mereka tidak lagi memperhatikan masalah harga. Jadi harga 120000 tetap dibeli. But cost is a major concern for most Indonesians. In a country where the World Bank says more than 40% of people survive on earnings of less than $2 a day. Elders Indonesia pays its workers $5 a day and gives them health insurance. Di kampung saya ini, itu banyak sekali tenaga-tenaga yang masih menganggur. Jadi dengan hadirnya Elders, ini banyak sekali menyerap tenaga kerja karena para pemuda-pemuda saya yang menganggur bisa bekerja tadinya yang menganggur akhirnya mereka bisa bekerja bisa mendapatkan penghasilan dan bisa mencukupi daripada keluarganya and we've got uh, about 35 permanent employees uh, if we add security that's another uh, that makes it 50 plus about uh, 35 casuals. So we're talking the best part of 90 people directly employed by our feedlot. Uh, that's 90 families that have an income where they wouldn't have an income normally. Still, Richard Slaney says doing business in Indonesia is very different than in Australia, and mistakes have been made along the way. Like in any business, our lack of planning probably from the outset, making too many presumptions of how things might work. I think mistakes in terms of the way the market works. Obviously, selling cattle on credit is a, was a major mistake we made very quickly. We had to stop that process. And you need to learn to be a lot smarter in the marketplace. However, in the years he's been in Indonesia, Richard says the climate for doing business has improved. I think it's much easier to run a clean business in Indonesia now than it used to be. And so there should be no fear from Australians in, coming to Indonesia that you have to have a local partner, you're going to have to be corrupt and this sort of thing. I wouldn't agree with that at all. But Elders is also looking for new prospects elsewhere in Asia. The region's on the move for sure and that's driven by the, the elephant in the room called China. Um, you know, they've, they've really upset the balance of the cattle trade in, in the Mekong, so we're talking Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam. Uh, we, see, we see some very serious opportunity in those countries to put some uh, to, to, to lay down some bricks and mortar and to feed some cattle. According to Richard Slaney, the key is taking their time, not charging in and getting caught, but doing the numbers and then taking the lessons learned from Indonesia to other markets. Certainly it's a long way from, from North Queensland and the life that I used to lead, but uh, there's a lot of rewards as well. I, I get a great deal of uh, a reward from living and working a lot with the lo local staff and seeing them develop and seeing them ride a motorbike to work instead of a push bike and you know their kids are happy and they're well fed and all of those sort of things matter to me as well you know and the learning never stops feeding cattle is always a challenge here and uh, hopefully I'll be able to take that on to do things within the region as well <laughs>